they are very good. I mean, we have family, some of them are not, you know. Yeah, they're really good. But they're, that's the other, because we try other organizations too. Mm -hmm. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Emmanuel United Church of Christ on this Sunday in which we remember the baptism of Jesus and our own baptism. Uh, please join me in the call to worship. What, ra what ruler wades through muddy streams and bows beneath the wave, ignoring how the world esteems the powerful and brave? Water, river, spirit, grace, sweep over me, sweep over me. Christ gleams with water brown with clay from land the prophets trod. Above, while heaven's clouds give way, descends the dove of God. Water, river, spirit, grace, sweep over me, sweep over me. Um, our first hymn is not a Christmas carol, but it, it, it will sound like a Christmas carol. Uh, number 314 in the red hymnal, How Firm a Foundation. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said, who unto the same? I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand upheld by my righteous, omnipotent hand. Upheld by my righteous, omnipotent hand. When through the deep waters I cause thee to go, the rivers of woe shall not thee overflow. For I will be with thee thy troubles to bless and sanctify to Thy deepest distress and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. The soul that on Jesus hath leaned for repose, I will not, I will not desert to his foes that soul though all hell should endeavor to shake I'll never no never no never forsake I'll never no never no Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the 
the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. We use confession number two. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their sins. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hearken now unto the comforting assurance of the grace of God, promised in the gospel to all that repent and believe. As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Unto as many of us, therefore, beloved sisters and brothers, as truly repent of our sins and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with full purpose of new obedience, I announce and declare by the authority and in the name of Christ that our sins are forgiven according to his promise in the gospel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen, amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first scripture reading, our, Old Test, our first Old Testament reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says the Lord, thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and spread them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk, who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 29. In the bulletin insert, we will read responsively. 
Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of God is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Our first New Testament reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 34th verse. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is, the Lord, he is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And finally, our gospel uh, lesson this morning, a brief one, uh, Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented it, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Here end our scripture readings for this morning. May God bless to our hearing the reading of God's holy word. Um, we will next have our remembrance of baptism uh, as as found in the as found in the other bulletin insert. Uh, members and friends in Christ, we gather now to celebrate the gift of grace and the sacrament of baptism. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and creator of us all. Jesus came to be baptized by John, but John tried to make him change his mind. I ought to be baptized by you, John said, yet you have come to me. Jesus said, let it be so for now, for in this way we shall do all that God requires. So John agreed. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. Then heaven was opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and lighting on him. Then a voice from heaven said from heaven, This is my own beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God. Inasmuch as the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to our children, Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is a mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church. The sign and seal of their participation in God's forgiveness and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship.
This is the water of baptism. Out of this water we rise with new life, forgiven of sin and one in Christ, members of Christ's body. Do you believe in God? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come, the judge, the quick, and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Ghost? I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please say, I do. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? I promise with the help of God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in the world? I promise with the help of God. We thank you, God, for the gift of creation called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters. Out of the waters of the deep, you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain all life. In the time of Noah, you washed the earth with the waters of the flood, and your ark of salvation bore a new beginning. In the time of Moses, your people Israel passed through the Red Sea waters from slavery to freedom and crossed the flowing Jordan to enter the promised land. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. Jesus was baptized by John in the water of the Jordan, became living water to a woman at the Samaritan well, washed the feet of the disciples and sent them forth to baptize the nations by water and the Holy Spirit. Remember your baptism and be grateful. Remember your baptism and be grateful. Remember your baptism and be grateful. And I will remember my baptism and be grateful. Our uh, our remaining hymns are in the are in the black hymnal. Uh, the next is number uh, one sixty seven. Number one sixty seven in the black hymnal. Mark how the Lamb of God self-offering Our human sinfulness takes on In the birth waters of the Jordan As Jesus is baptized by John Hear how the voice from heaven falls thunders lo this is my beloved son see how in dove like form the spirit descends on god's anointed one from this assurance of god's favor Jesus goes to the wilderness There to endure a time of testing That readied him to teach and bless So we by water and the Spirit Baptized into Christ's ministry 
are often led by paths of service through mazes of adversity. Grant us, O God, the strength and courage to live the faith our lips declare. Bless us in our baptismal calling, Christ's royal priesthood help us share. Turn us from every false allegiance that we may trust in Christ alone. Raise up in us a chosen people transformed by love to be your own. We come now to our our time of prayer. Um, we want to continue to uh, want to continue to keep in prayer, Susan and, and Susan and Dorothy and Nancy, uh, Alan and Donald and Donna. Uh, Carol is requesting prayers for Matt Farnan, who passed suddenly. Uh, who, from this life and for his family. So we, we pray for Matt and his and his family. Uh, also, please pray for Gail. Uh, she isn't here today. She's having a tremendous amount of pain from her hip. So please, uh, please keep uh, Gail in prayer for healing and relief from pain. Other requests? Uh, Barbara. Morano family, yes. My friend Norman passed away during the holidays. Yes. Other requests. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Oh, one more prayer. Uh, keep Alyssa in prayer. This is from Kathy Roberts. Please keep uh, Alyssa in prayer as she keeps uh, pass passing out and, and, and getting lightheaded. I keep wanting to say I keep wanting to say baby Alyssa, but she's not she, she's not a baby anymore. <laughs> she's growing up. And with thy spirit, let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for sending Jesus to take uh, to take upon Himself our sins, that we may take upon that that He may grant us forgiveness and grace. We thank you for your grace in bringing us through this past week, uh, for some a week of sorrow, for some a week of joy, for some a week of decision. Uh, but it, it was the week that you gave us, and we pray that you would be with us in the week ahead. We pray for all who have passed in this life. We pray for Matt, uh, for Matt Farnan. Uh, we pray for Martin Morano, and we pray for Norman. Eternal rest grant them, O Lord, and light perpetual shine upon them and be with their families, their friends, their communities, all whose lives were touched by theirs. We pray for those struggling with illness of body or mind. We continue to pray for healing for Susan and for God's steadfast presence with Dorothy and Nancy. We pray for healing for Alan and Donald and, and Donna. We pray for Gail from relief for, uh, from hip pain. Uh, we pray for healing and comfort. We pray for Alyssa that you may uh, grant, grant her uh, healing from her from passing out and, and, and feeling lightheaded. Um, we pray for those in times of transition, for the homeless of our congregation and of our city, uh, that you would provide for their needs and protect them, for the veterans, that you would heal the wounds of war in their lives. We pray for Isaac and his family. We pray for Dee and her family. Uh, we now lift up those prayers that are burning silently in our hearts. May we pray in silence. We pray your guidance over those in authority over our country, our commonwealth, and our city. And we pray for peace 
in this war-torn world, this divided country. We pray for peace in Philadelphia. We pray for peace in Bridesburg. We pray for all the churches in Bridesburg, especially those of the Bridesburg Council, as we seek to share your love and meet the needs of your people. Most especially, Lord, do we pray for this congregation, Emmanuel United Church of Christ. Sustain us, encourage us, enable us to be a sign of your presence. May all that we say and do be to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We come to our time of announcements. Uh, any, any, any such? Any announcements? No, we have to start planning Lent service. Yep, yeah, Lent, Lent will be here before we know it. When is the first? Uh... Uh, I, I don't know the date for Ash Wednesday. I, I, will, have to, I will have to look that up. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let us give, not grudgingly or under compulsion, but with joy for the Lord, love, cheerful giver. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Receive, Lord, these are tithes and offerings we pray we'd use them to spread your good news of salvation and to build your kingdom on earth. This we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our next hymn, number 168 in the Black Hymnal, is an unfamiliar hymn. I I, uh, had asked uh, Ed to play it all the way through once so, so we can pick up the tune. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I'll start this sermon with a question to consider. What was the defining moment or what are the defining moments in your life? That is to say, what times or places in your life, what are the times and places in your life that have made you who you are today or that set the course for everything that followed for many it may be the moment you committed to a spouse or partner and realized that you were going to share the rest of your life with this person perhaps it was military service for me not all but many of my defining moments came by, by, by way of the various churches i attended over the years being around people who would ask me how's it going, and who really wanted to know how things were going with me was a life-changing experience. It's part of the reason I became a pastor. Having a caring community around me meant a great deal at some really vulnerable moments in my life when things outside 
of the church weren't going well at all, when I could easily have fallen through the cracks, and I, and I wanted that same caring community that I experienced to be there for others. Our gospel reading takes us on a bit of a time hop. In last week's reading, remember, we were talking about Jesus as an infant with Mary and Joseph protecting him, the wise men bringing gifts, and Herod spewing out threat, death threats. In today's reading, Jesus has grown into an adult. Jesus' cousin, John, known as John the Baptist, has also grown into an adult, and John has gone out to the wilderness to preach repentance and to baptize in the River Jordan. For the Jews of Jesus' day, as well as for us, baptism is a ritual washing, is a ritual washing symbolizing a turning away from sin. However, for Jews, baptism was primarily a ritual for Gentiles seeking to convert to Judaism and be connected to the community of Jewish faith. Simply put, it was one of several rituals required of Gentiles seeking to become Jews. Circumcision, of course, was, was another. What made John's baptism so striking was that those coming to him were mostly Jews, not Gentiles. Baptism was not required of those born into Judaism, only for outsiders seeking to join the community. But John baptized Jews and Gentiles alike. Perhaps John the Baptist had an insight that those Jews coming to him felt so cut off from their community by their sense of guilt that they needed a tangible way to demonstrate and to symbolize and to, and to manifest their renewed commitment. And then Jesus came to John for baptism as well, and John hesitated as he said that he should be asking Jesus for baptism and not the other way around. But Jesus commanded John to baptize him all the same. And we know what came next. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the Spirit coming down on him like a dove and a voice from heaven calling him God's beloved Son. For Jesus, this, this was a defining moment, a turning point that set the course for the rest of Jesus' life. We may ask, why did Jesus need to be baptized? John offered a baptism of repentance, but we believe that Jesus was without sin and therefore had nothing to repent. Jesus was baptized not to turn away from his own guilt, but to turn in solidarity toward sinful human, humankind. Jesus was baptized not for his own sin, but for ours. As I said, I believe that Jesus' baptism with the Spirit coming down and the voice from God tell, telling him that God loved him was a defining moment for Jesus. The first thing Jesus did after his baptism was to go into the wilderness to discern his call and to be tempted by Satan. And that voice of love from heaven gave Jesus strength to resist temptation. Jesus' ministry of healing, preaching, casting out demons was about bringing love to God's love to the people. He spent time with those considered sinners, those who were told they were beyond the reach of God's love. Jesus taught his followers to see God as a loving father because of that voice from heaven calling Jesus God's beloved son. At the transfiguration, remember, Jesus invited Peter, James, and John to the mountaintop with him, and they, the, the three of them and, and Jesus, heard that same voice telling them, this, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Even when Jesus, Jesus had harsh words for the religious establishment, and he said things to them and about them that were scathing, it was to point out offenses against God's love and to jolt people out of their complacency. It was Jesus' sense of being a beloved son that sustained him when he prayed in the garden, not my will, but thine be done. Beloved. That word that defined Jesus' ministry was his sense that he was God's beloved, reaching out in love to a world that God so loved. Now, I don't suspect most of us have heard a voice from heaven telling us, you are God's beloved. Maybe none of us have, and how different our lives would be if, if we had. But just as Jesus was baptized not for himself but for us, the voice from heaven calling Jesus beloved was for us as much as it was for Jesus. Indeed, as sinful and broken as we are, we are God's beloved. Our sacrament of baptism, whether performed on, infant or on children or adults, is a sacrament of love. 
As the pastor says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And afterwards, uh, pronounces the words, receive the Holy Spirit, child of God, disciple of Christ, member of Christ's church. Romans chapter 6 says that in in baptism we are baptized into Christ's death, so that as Christ died and was resurrected, we too die to sin, our sinful nature, that part of us that resists God's love, is put to death in the waters of baptism, and we rise to new life. I ask again the question I asked a few moments ago, what are the defining moments in your life? Perhaps it was a high moment in your life when you met your partner or spouse and just and knew to the marrow of your bones that this is the person you were going to share your life with. Or you discovered you had some gift for art, for music, for fixing cars, and that this was going to be your life's work. Or perhaps your turning point was a low point, hitting bottom in some way, knowing that your addiction or compulsion had taken you to some place at which you could hardly stand to see yourself in the mirror, and that however painful, your life had to change, and you had to ask God for help in making that change. And that process of transformation is is at the core of your identity. Our baptismal identity, beloved daughter or son of God, disciple of Christ, member of the church, Beloved member of the community of faith is at the very core of who we are as Christians, at the very center of our lives as Christians, that we are beloved and and that because we are beloved by God, we can be loving toward neighbor. We love because God first loved us. And it makes sense. After all, we, we can't give to others what we don't have ourselves. In our relationships, we can't treat family, friends, and neighbors as whole and holy people if we ourselves feel like dirty, damaged goods. We can't bring healing to others if we haven't experienced at least some measure of healing ourselves. Our wounds, once they have healed somewhat, can help us minister to others similarly wounded. But if we haven't experienced healing, if we're still carrying gaping open wounds, all we can do is bleed on others, and that helps no one. Not them, not us. We can't give love to others if we haven't experienced love ourselves. And so the sacrament of baptism is first and foremost a sacrament of love. And our identity as Christians is first and foremost an identity grounded and centered in love. As Christians, love is at the very center of who we are. As you leave church today, as we leave church today, go out to begin your week believing and knowing that you are God's beloved child. You are God's beloved We are God's beloved, not because of what we've done, but because of what Christ did. From Genesis, we believe that we are created in God's image with something of God inside each of us. As baptized followers of the risen Christ, we know that we are children of God, disciples of Christ, members of Christ's church. Go out into the world knowing that everyone you encounter is also created in God's image, also carry something of God within them, however hidden it may sometimes be. And so that of God within you can connect to that of God within others, if we let it, if our need for control and our egos don't get in the way. You will meet sisters and brothers in Christ who are also children of God, disciples of Christ, members of Christ's church. The Christ within you can connect to the Christ within other Christians, if we let it, if we let it. At the start of his ministry, Jesus heard the words, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And that sense of himself as, be, as God's beloved helped him to be loving toward others and shaped his whole ministry and ultimately changed the course of human history and the fate of the human race. May we come to know ourselves as beloved men, women, and children created in God's image. Beloved children of God, beloved disciples of Christ, beloved members of Christ's church. May our sense of being beloved help us to be loving toward all we encounter. Amen. Please join me in praying in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go forth in this place to love and serve the Lord. Go forth in this place into the world in peace to love and serve all to whom God calls us. Go forth knowing that you are God, God's beloved child, a disciple of Christ, a member of Christ's church. And remember that all you encounter this week are made in the image of God. And as you go forth, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and go with you each one now and evermore. Amen. 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 Our last hymn is number 82 in the black hymnal, number 82. Go, my children, with my blessing. Go, my children, with my blessing, never alone. Waking, sleeping, I am with you, you are my own. In my love's baptismal river, I have made you mine forever. Go, my children, with my blessing, you are my own. Go, my children, fed and nourished closer to me grow in love and love by serving joyful and free hear my spirit's power filled you here with tender comfort stilled you go my children fed and nourished joyful and free 